Hi, I have a lot of people asking me what are the Akashic Records, so I thought I'd make a video to share that with you. Um, I'd like to start out by saying I'm not an expert. Um, I don't think anybody really is an expert, um, but we're just all doing our best. So let me share with you what I know. So the word Akashic Records is actually rooted in um, ancient Indian um, language. So the word Akasha actually is from Sanskrit and it means ether or like space or sky. So it's kind of just like the air above us. Now I did some digging to find this out and the root word of Akasha is Kash, which is from Vedic Sanskrit. And that is a action word, a noun, which means to open space or sky. So if you're thinking about the Akashic Records, it's um, really a dimension or like a plane of existence higher than where, where we're at now. And some people are able to access that, that energy there to, to rise up their vibration, to, to match the vibration of that plane or dimension. And in that plane of the Akashic Records, it is sort of like, think of the universe like a supercomputer and the Akashic realm is like the cloud. It holds all the information that ever existed. So that includes, um, you know, information about every soul that has ever lived, every relationship, every thought, every feeling, every decision, everything that has ever happened in the history of our world, that information is stored there. And there's a lot of other information too, like the book of knowledge, the book of love, the book of almost anything. Um, and I say book because a lot of people, including me, visit the Akashic Records and visually we see it as a library. So people call it the Hall of Records, sometimes because to me anyway, it looks like a big Greek temple when I visit it in my consciousness. And um, it's so beautiful. It's like sparkling white and I enter the building and then I'm able to access the records room. So um, like every single soul has their own records room. And for the person I'm reading, who I have permission to read for, you know, like a client, um, I can access their room and get the information that will best support and empower them for what they need right now in this time. But I didn't always used to do that. I used to, uh, when I first started out, I was trying to learn how to access the Akashic Records. What would happen is actually, um, I would get to that place, but I wasn't really able to fully like connect to records. What happened at the beginning for me was I would get to that place and then I would feel, it's hard to explain, but I feel like as if my body was on a table, like at a doctor's office and there were beings of light all around me. Like, I don't know if you would call them angels or ascended masters or spirit guides, or I don't really know. They were beings of light and they were doing healings on me. And I think what was happening was they were adjusting my vibration because I clearly wanted to be able to access that place. And I felt so called to go there. Like my soul was calling me to learn that, that ability, that skill. And by the way, I think everybody can learn that. It's part of our divine right. Some people call it a birthright. It just takes training and the right, uh, the right vibration. <laughs> so speaking of that, I was visiting the Akashic Records for a while and every time I would go, um, I was sort of like, like imagine a kindergartner going to a high school trigonometry class. And the kindergartner was like, I want to do it. And the teacher's like, no, no. And they like usher them to the right place. So that's kind of how I picture what was happening with me. Um, 
they were like, no, no, you're not ready for this level, but let's, let's help you get there. So um, my energy was being worked on while I was there. It felt very healing. It felt very calm and peaceful. And over time, I did practice and practice and training, and I took a course, I read books. Um, over time, I did learn how to access the Akashic Records and actually be able to read people's records, um, my own and others, for the purpose of helping and supporting people in their personal growth, in their empowerment, and just in their soul's ascension. Now, now a crazy thing to realize that's still hard for me to wrap my brain around is that in the human realm, like in the earth plane where we live, time feels linear. There's a past, there's the present, and there's the future. However, you might have heard some spiritual teachers, you know, like Buddha or other authors who are presently with us say that everything exists in the present. And that is correct. When you go out of the earth plane and you visit the Akashic realm, you realize that everything is happening simultaneously. So I can go in and view a client's past life. Let's say they're struggling with something in this lifetime. And then I ask to be shown a past life where maybe that's the source of their current struggles. And I, I need to find that out to share that information with them. I can go and view a past life, but really what I'm doing is viewing a uh, concurrent life. So it's kind of crazy to think about, but we are all living all of our lifetimes, thousands and thousands and possibly millions of lifetimes. I don't really know, but it's all happening simultaneously. And within that reality is the fact that within this lifetime that we know of right now, like me, I'm Katrina, I live in Canada, this is my life right now, um, there's countless um, other dimensions where I'm not living in Canada. Maybe I'm still living in Germany. That's where I used to live. Maybe I'm not married to my husband. Maybe I'm doing something else. Um, you know, all of the decisions we make with our free will, that is guiding us to, to forward in life. Um, there's lots of different dimensions where those potentials, um, where different potentials exist. So I can also tap into that. So for example, I have some people asking me when they get a reading, should I stay with this partner? And I'm never going to say yes or no, that's not my choice. It's their free will. But what I can do is I can tap into their other um, realities and say, well, what does it feel like for them if they stay with this partner? And then I can share that information with them. And then I can ask, what does it feel like for them if they do not stay with this partner? And then, you know, feel like, what does it look like? I can sort of get some information to share with them so they can make an informed decision. And I, a good reader, a good um, intuitive will never impose their opinions on you or, um, be aggressive in their suggestions. It's always it's always down to your free will. We all have a free will, it's our birthright. And like I said, there's lots of dimensions that exist where um, you made one decision in this life and then in the, you know, in the next dimension you made another decision. So it's very interesting and sort of mind blowing. So in conclusion, Think of the Akashic Records as the supercomputer cloud. So the universe is operating in mysterious ways we don't really understand because we're such puny humans, but we can understand the idea of a cloud where it's up there, it's accessible, it contains lots and lots of information, and it's intangible but yet it's real so think of the akashic records like that and really 
if you're working with them in your own way or if you're seeking a reading from somebody like me who does readings, um, really they're just there for, well, they're there to exist, but also you can access them for your own empowerment and your own personal development. It provides you wisdom with um, certain decisions you need to make in your life or if you feel stuck in your life. It also helps you understand your relationships. Um, if you can find out information about the karma that you're carrying into the relationship, for example, if you have a hard time getting along with a sister or if you and your one of your parents have always had a hard time, you can find out information possibly about past lives that will help you understand that and you can even find out your your life purpose, your soul's purpose for this lifetime. It, you can read your soul contract for this lifetime. There's so many amazing things you can you can do, you can gain. Um, sometimes information is blocked if it's not meant for you. It's like you're not meant to know everything all at once because that's the whole purpose of living as a human. Um, we're meant to live and learn and, you know, every incarnation, our soul is advancing farther and farther along in the ascension process. So um, sometimes they don't show you things, but most of the time they do. And when I'm talking about they, I mean like the um, keepers of the records. So our spirit guides, the ascended masters, our teachers, um, the higher beings who, who watch over that and allow us access. So like earlier when I was saying they took me out of the trigonometry class, you know, metaphorically and made me work on my vibration. Those were the people or the beings who, who did that. And it's really a beautiful thing when you are able to, when you're able to find out information that could possibly be life-changing. Um, maybe you have a problem and you didn't realize the source of that problem is actually from childhood and there's something to be healed in your energy and once you heal it you can move on and you're not stuck anymore so there's lots and lots of amazing benefits of working with the Akashic Records either yourself or through a reader so um, thank you so much. I do offer Akashic Records readings. If you go to my website, I'll include a link and you can see my availability. Um, I also offer chakra energy readings, energy healings, and packages of um, more, more complex um, offerings. So to go to my website, katrinaslade.com and you'll find all the information there. I hope this information was helpful for you and if so please comment please share and thank you so much for listening